Genetic Engineering Organisms have different traits, and this is due to their genetic code. For example, a tiger has strong muscles, a tail, and sharp claws, just to name a few. And an eagle has big wings, a sharp beak, and powerful talons. The instructions to create these organisms are found in the DNA. Within the DNA, short sections have the instructions to code for different characteristics. These are known as genes. So a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular characteristic in an organism. In genetic engineering, we're going to be taking genes from one organism and transferring it to another one to create some interesting combinations. Now we have produced a GMO, also known as a genetically modified organism. Now putting wings on a tiger might be a little bit too far-fetched. So let's talk about examples of genetic engineering that is used today. In diabetes, the pancreas cannot produce enough insulin. So in the past, people who had type 1 diabetes would usually get their insulin from animals such as cows and pigs. These would be injected into the person. Now the problem with using animal insulin for a human being is that it's not going to be as effective. And secondly, insulin from one species to another species might also produce some unwanted side effects. In addition, if we want to treat the whole world, that means we're going to have to be killing a lot of animals. Also, some people might be against using animal insulin due to cultural or religious beliefs. So, what's the solution? The solution is that we need human insulin, however, we don't want to be taking it from other humans. So, we're going to be using bacteria to make human insulin. Lots and lots of bacteria. Now, these bacteria are not just standard bacteria. They're going to be genetically modified. So, when they produce human insulin, that means it's going to be effective, will not clash with people's culture or religion, and because bacteria grow quickly, we can produce enough insulin to treat everyone on the planet who has diabetes. Okay, so let's talk about how we can do that. Our recipe to producing insulin, producing bacteria, using genetic engineering. So step one is that we need to locate the insulin gene. So we're going to get a human cell and you could use any type of human cell because they all have the exact same DNA. Next, we're going to locate the insulin gene within the whole DNA. Okay, once we found it, we're going to use restriction enzymes. You can think of these as biological scissors and we're going to snip and snip on both sides of the gene. Okay, we've removed the gene. Now, because we use restriction enzymes, we're also going to get these parts at the end. They're called sticky ends. You could think of them like the tips of a jigsaw puzzle. They're going to be useful later on. Okay, so this gene needs to go into a bacteria. So we can't just throw it into the bacteria. That's not going to work. We need a vector. A vector is something that's going to carry the gene into the bacteria. So a bacteria has normal chromosomal DNA, but also has these circles called plasmids. And it's the plasmid that's going to act as a vector. You could think of it like a taxi carrying the gene into the bacteria. So let's take one of these plasmids out. Now we need to make space for the insulin gene. So we're going to cut the plasmid using the same restriction enzyme that we used to cut the human DNA. And we can see that we got more sticky ends. Now the sticky ends on the human DNA and the ones on the plasmid are going to be complementary. This is the benefit of using the same restriction enzyme. Now that we've opened the plasmid, we can place the gene into the plasmid. Perfect, almost there. The next step is to use ligase. Ligase is an enzyme and you can think of it like glue. It even sounds the same, ligase, glue. Ligase makes sure that the DNA and the plasmid are thoroughly joined together. 
Perfect, we've placed the gene in the plasmid. What we've produced now is no ordinary plasmid. You could call this a recombinant DNA. Recombinant has the word combi, which means this plasmid is a combination of both human and bacterial DNA. Right, so now we need to transfer this plasmid into a bacteria. Excellent, we've produced a bacteria that has human DNA inside it. In particular, it has the insulin gene. So, we're going to let this bacteria multiply to make lots and lots of copies. Now we have an army of bacteria and all the cells within this army have the insulin gene. So, we let them make insulin and then we extract it, put it into bottles and give it to our patients. Okay, a quick summary of what we just done. Step one is to locate the desired gene in the DNA. Step two, we're going to cut the gene out of the DNA using restriction enzymes. Step three, we're going to cut a plasmid open using the same enzyme. Step four, place the gene inside the plasmid. Then seal the gene with ligase enzyme. Now we've produced recombinant DNA. Place the new plasmid into a bacteria and allow the bacteria to make many copies of itself. And finally, extract the insulin. So we've produced human insulin, but made by a bacteria. Using genetic engineering gives us many advantages. In this case, we used bacteria to make human insulin. Perhaps one day, we could do even more adventurous stuff. But that's for another video. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.